Hello, hello. So I talked about functional disconnection syndrome last week or brain imbalance. And today I want to talk about what uh, I received a lot of messages for after I did that last video and uh, series last week. So a lot of parents were, you know, asking questions about really what are the causes of functional disconnection syndrome. And even some parents were, you know, wondering what are the signs or cues that development is not occurring normally. So this was from parents who have much younger children, even infants, or what, you know, older parents messaged me saying what were signs that, uh, you know, indicators that something might be amiss because maybe their child missed that in infancy. So I wanted to, I want to talk today about milestones and um, the brain's timing mechanisms. So what has been found is that children with learning disabilities, uh, one of the factors is that the timing mechanism in their brain is kind of off. So it's, it's not exactly on cue and that that plays a huge role in learning, reading, ADHD, and so forth. It affects not only like affects visual processing, auditory processing, coordination, movement, and so forth. And I have talked about this before, um, but what I first want to say is that a lot of parents will go to their pediatrician when their child's a baby and they will have concerns that, uh, you know, their child's not meeting a milestone, that it's late, that it's too early, that they move through, through it too quickly, that they're not doing it, with, you know, like the other kids. And most of the time, um, or oftentimes their, their pediatrician will say, it's fine, don't worry about it, you know, every kid's different and so forth, which is true, every kid is different. However, milestones are actually like huge like they matter a lot and they matter a lot in terms of when your child meets them um, how quickly they move through them how they're going through that milestone and so forth I'm going to give some really specific examples in a minute um, but just listen to that to that mama's instinct like I always say um, that you know because so many moms will say something didn't feel right like he wasn't crawling right or he wasn't rolling over right listen to that instinct because yes those milestones are huge 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 and so to the highly attuned moms out there most of my viewers and clients and so forth that's you uh knowing that something was off or something is off then yes this episode is for you so basically, as I've said a hundred times before, and I'll say a hundred times more, is that the sensory motor system is what helps to develop specific areas of the brain. Um, and in a very tiered manner, right? The brain develops in the same way that it evolved. So the last part of the brain to evolve was the cortex. And so uh, that's the last part that develops. And that's the thinking, reasoning, planning, part of the brain where executive functioning and all of that type of stuff occurs. So milestones are huge and skipping over them, moving through them too quickly, not doing them properly are, uh, you know, definitely signs something is amiss. So here's a really clear example. I love to talk about crawling because it is a huge one. It's not the only milestone, but it's one that people can really like, everyone gets that one. So your child should crawl for several months and they shouldn't be skipping it it's not an amazing thing and uh, I remember celebrating when my daughter was uh, an early walker but it's actually not an amazing thing if they're an early walker because it means that they're moving through that milestone too quickly and crawling really helps to integrate the left and right brain hemisphere to improve communication to build that corpus callosum between the left and right brain hemisphere and so forth and so if your child is, you know, skips crawling, moves through it too quickly, is an early walker or does weird things like it's not a normal crawl. Like it just, it looks really sloppy even if they've been doing it for a while. Maybe they do a bum shuffle, maybe they drag their leg. A lot of the parents I work with tell me these are the things that happened when their child was an infant. And so it's, yes, it is a big deal. It's not the end of the world, but it's definitely something to be aware of whether this is happening now or whether this happened in the past. So uh, think of brain development as the foundation of a house. It builds layer by layer, brick by brick, and it has to happen in a very specific sequence. It can't just be random and I ah, will throw this in here after. So if you hired someone to build a foundation for your house, and let's say it's the old style big gray bricks to build the foundation, most of it I know now is poured concrete, um, and the person laying those bricks uh, was missing some bricks and or some of them were cracked and you said to them 
uh, you know, is that, that's probably not a good thing, right? And they're like, ah, it's no big deal. It's just a few bricks or it's just the odd crack here or there. It's all gonna be, house is gonna be fine. Um, hopefully you would know you have trouble on your hands with the person that you've hired because you know that that foundation has to be rock solid. And I'm not just trying to give you a cute analogy. That's truly and honestly the exact same thing that has to occur with brain development with your child. It has to be in a sequential fashion. So it is a big deal if they are moving, th moving through things too quickly. And I know there's the odd person who will tell me, you know, my child didn't really crawl and they're fine. And that is absolutely true. It does happen. But the research has shown time and time again that more times than not, when kids skip, move through milestones too quickly, or whatever the case may be, they end up having um, deficits with cognition, learning, reading, writing, motor, whether it's fine or gross motor, focus, attention, behavior, emotional regulation, or all of the above. <laughs> so you definitely want to pay attention to that. So yes, milestones matter. And I really truly believe if we were all taught this, that milestones matter. And we started looking at them right away. We were like, just, you know, pro like the way we go to like Lamaze classes when we're pregnant or go to like, you know, learn how to take care of our baby when we're pregnant. If we learned also, you know, you want to make sure that they're crawling at this age, they're doing it for long enough. It would make such a huge difference with brain development. So yes, milestones absolutely matter. The brain's timing mechanism is absolutely critical to the accurate processing and delivery of information in the brain. So whether that's learning something um, in terms of academically, whether that's timing in terms of being able to move uh, fluidly, whether it's playing sports or walking or fine motor skills, timing, it's all about timing in the brain. And that is um, a big part of the thing with the cerebellum, which is um, one of the last pieces we work on in my, my six month program, uh, the full potential formula, cerebellum development. So timing is key. So uh, basically what happens is that with the brain, there is this schedule for development, just as if you think of like in a year, there is four different seasons and those seasons happen in a specific order. And if it doesn't, then it's gonna really throw things off, right? It's gonna throw the birds off, it's gonna throw things off for the farmers and the crops and the growing season. If winter happens too long or spring, you know, is too wet or too dry, which is happening in Ontario right now, in my neck of the woods anyway, then things are going to be affected. And so the same thing is true with the brain. There's a schedule and if it doesn't happen, the brain is going to be off schedule so that's going to affect, you know, timing and so forth. So the way to think of it is think of your child's brain as having countless roads with electrical activity flowing through constantly. And so the brain's ske uh, schedule or the brain's timing mechanism can get thrown off when this electrical activity uh, that basically promotes brain development or growth gets out of sync. And so we basically what can, you're probably wondering like, how does that happen? What can cause that? And this is where in comes what I was talking about last week of the left and right brain development. So the left and right brain actually take turns developing. It's not like the brain just develops all at the same time. Okay, so it's not like a plant where, uh, you know, and even plants have different things that grow first, right? The flower happens last, but it doesn't just happen all at once. And so with the left and right brain, uh, the right brain is what develops first. It develops in the first two years of life. One of the things, for example, that the right brain is responsible for, which makes so much sense if you think of development, is the gross motor skills. So like, you know, being able to move an arm, being able to move a leg. So if you think of infant movements, where a baby starts, you know, being able to lift its head and then it maybe can start lifting its legs or its arms and slowly builds that strength and so forth. That's all right brain activity. So it's not to say the left brain is not growing at all. It's def it is growing, but the right brain is really the show is, is really the star in the show in the first two years in terms of growth. After that, at around age two, think of the terrible twos, that's when the left brain starts to come online and now it's its turn to really catch up with development um, to the, uh, you know, in, in comparison to the right brain. So right brain really slows down and now it's the right or the left brain that really takes center stage with growth. And this is when kids really start to acquire, for example, a really diverse vocabulary and language skills and so forth. 
this is a very left brain task. The language center is on the left side of the brain. This is where parents who have children with autism, they will maybe start getting some red flags going like he's not really speaking. He's two and a half, he's three years old. Something's not right. He's not, you know, acquiring language very well. The left brain is not developing very well in these kids. And it has been found that, um, you know, that's what it's connected to is the language center and so forth. So basically what happens is the left brain and the right brain are constantly switching back and forth in terms of development. So right brain for the first years, then it's the left brain, then the right brain takes uh, some more time to develop, then it's left brain. And this happens until around age 10, 11, when the brain reaches its adult size. It doesn't mean it's fully developed and it's not an adult brain, we all know that, but it reaches adult size. And so you might be wondering, well, what are the causes if, like there is imbalance, which is what I talked about last week with functional disconnection syndrome, and that, you know, one side of the brain is overdeveloped and one side is underdeveloped. Uh, and so there's environmental toxicity. I've talked a lot about that in the past. So that could be heavy metals, that could be chemicals, uh, like pesticides. It could be, um, you know, premature birth. It could be complications during pregnancy or complications during, uh, you know, delivery. It could be uh, just not meeting those milestones, which that can happen because of chemical or heavy metal toxicity. It could be because of insufficient sensory motor stimulation, and it doesn't mean you're a bad mom, right? Um, I've talked about this a million times before. I held my daughter constantly when she was a baby because she was so darn fussy. I had no idea there was other uh, biochemical and gut imbalances going on with her, and I wanted to practice attachment parenting, and I had her on me like for the first two years. So very securely attached child, but did not get enough uh, gross motor, fine motor, uh, tummy time, all of that type of stuff. So it there was some uh, weaknesses and underdevelopment and overdevelopment in certain areas that we had to work on as a result. So basically, um, you know, other causes like tied into that is poorly developed sensory system or connections. So all that to say is that the result when these factors come into play, whether it's one or all of the above, is that the neurons that were supposed to create um, a new connection or meet that milestone, basically they miss out on their timing to make that connection. And that's when things can really start to go awry and problems can start to result. And so if this happens too much or if this happens during a during a really key uh, phase or time um, when the brain is really supposed to, you know, work on developing a certain area that's really uh, critical to certain skills, then the result is going to be um, brain imbalance, which I talked about last week, and the brain's pattern of development is basically going to fall out of sequence. So uh, the result can be delays in specific skills. So whether it's language, social skills, e emotional regulation, whether it's with finer gross motor skills, you know, memory cognition, whatever the case may be. And the result is that one side of the brain is going to be overdeveloped and one side of the brain is going to be underdeveloped. So if there is a delay that occurs in a critical area of the brain, it can slow down the growth of the entire side of that brain. And again, if this continues and doesn't get addressed, then what's going to happen is the brain is going to continue on that side, the brain is going to continue to miss out on those timed connections. And that's going to result in more imbalance. And then this is why we see uh, problems that become exasperated or become worse as children get older. So maybe when, I don't know, little Johnny was four, you know, it wasn't such a big deal. It was just a few things. And then as he gets older and this imbalance becomes like more and more pronounced and one side of the brain just keeps over developing and one side of the brain just is lagging further and further behind until, as I mentioned last week, this side of the brain just takes over and starts doing this side of the brain's job because it feels it can't rely on it, right? Like that maybe coworker or colleague we've had that we have to feel like we just have to do everything because they won't do anything. If we don't do it, nobody else will. That's the result. And so this is where we're going to end up with these diagnoses and then these diagnoses that can become more severe and so forth. And so it's not often until school age that we will see these problems. Um, it does depend on 
what side of the brain is imbalanced. So if there is a left brain overdevelopment and a right brain delay, that's typically gonna present more as symptoms of ADHD and autism and so forth. That's gonna be more detectable early on before kids start school because it's more likely to be obvious in terms of behavior and so forth, but not necessarily something that's going to be, that's gonna make parents go, oh my goodness, they're just gonna be like, oh my gosh, this kid is so busy and he's so much different maybe than my other one. If it's a case where it's the right brain that is overdeveloped and the left brain that's underdeveloped, that's more typical of things like learning disabilities, dyslexia, and so forth. And that is often not going to get detected until possibly, I don't even wanna say kindergarten because those kids might just get flagged as, yeah, he's a little bit behind. Um, and it's more in grade one or grade two, that's when parents start reaching out to me saying he's, he's you know, a year or two behind his peers, or they might tell me and call me in grade four and say he's way behind his peers. It's been going on for a while and it's just getting worse and worse. And so um, this is why we have to pay attention to milestones and they can be so insightful because we don't wanna wait until there is a problem. So we don't wanna wait until, like we, if we are not gonna see a problem until school age or grade one or grade two, if we can be aware of these milestones and the impact that they play on brain development and the indications that they can give us if it's not occurring normally, then we can get on top of things and nip it in the bud way, way sooner than if we wait till we're into an all out crisis. So um, let me know, this is what my pl I would love to do. Um, let me know if your child missed, skipped, moved through, or seemed to move through a milestone awkwardly. So that could be things like lifting their head, rolling over, creeping. So creeping is like they're on their belly and they're kind of doing that ninja thing before they start crawling. Um, maybe they actually crawled, but they didn't do it you know, very well. Maybe some of this really resonates. Maybe there was other milestones, right? Whether it was talking or walking or whatever the case may be. Let me know in the comments below what you saw, if you noticed anything, it, maybe you have concerns right now about it, a young child. And I will reply and let you know what that can be connected to because it's really interesting that crawling can really affect certain areas and creeping can really affect certain areas. So for example, my daughter didn't really creep, she just crawled and it affect, and she had a lot of sensory processing issues and lo and behold, um, the creeping really tends to help develop an area of the brain that's responsible for this sense, the development of the sensory system. So let me know in the comments below what you're seeing and so forth. And if your child skipped through these milestones, if any of this resonates with brain imbalance and so forth. So, um, if you have not grabbed my free starter kit, there are also in there some really good exercises uh, to just get you started as well as some nutrition tips that can get you started on uh, you know, with developing a better brain for your child. And uh, from there, if you're interested, feel free to book a uh, clarity call for the full potential formula. So thanks for watching everyone and have a great day, bye.